Lewis at 36 years of age. Is he off the diving board? The height advantage of two and a half inches for Lewis. Reach advantage listed here, although there are some statistical compilations that indicate Rockman has an identical reach to that of Lewis. By our measurements, Lewis still two inches longer. Rockman weighed in two pounds under his Johannesburg weight at 236. Lewis six and a half pounds under his Johannesburg weight at 246 and a half. We look back at a CompuBox statistical profile of what happened in the first fight down in South Africa. And the first thing you'll notice is that Lennox Lewis was throwing only 32 punches per round. Lewis must throw many more punches than that in order to maximize his chances to win. At his best, he throws about 60 punches per round, of which about 30 are jabs. But in South Africa, Lewis was only throwing 19 jabs per round. Rachman was landing about the same number, but throwing more, and that activity level helped to set Rock up for the right hand that won the fight. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Hussein Rachman Lennox Lewis fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case a cut causes an a case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we'll go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Now let's go to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. for a special presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, before we bring out our boxers and our main event of the evening at this time, I'd like to ask you to rise for the singing of the national anthems. First, ladies and gentlemen, we present the national anthem of Great Britain. To lead us, please welcome popular R&B recording artist from Paraphone Records, introducing Beverly Knight. Thank you very much to Beverly Knight. Ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed with our U.S. national anthem, we have a very special request for your attention for a solemn moment as we pause to recognize the passing of Dr. Elias Ghanem, the former chairman of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Boxing lost one of its great leaders and humanitarians, and at this time, we ask for your silence as our timekeeper tolls 10 in honor of Dr. Elias Ghanem. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. May God rest his soul. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to lead us in the national anthem of the United States, joining us with their current release entitled, This Way, please welcome Grammy-nominated Atlantic Records recording artist, introducing Jewel. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam, whose broad stripes and bright stones through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we wore. We're so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say. Spangled banner and wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. And thank you.
thank you very much to Jewel. in nearly five years, Lennox Lewis, in the role of challenger, will enter the ring first. George, we've talked about the significance in the past of a fighter trying to come back from a knockout loss against the same fighter who knocked him out. What must Lewis do in round one to reverse the psychology with which they left South Africa. You gotta make certain he doesn't get into any exchanges so that he does not taste and remember probably some injured confidence in there. One shot could bring it all back to him. I've been in that position before. You remember those knockouts too well. So his best thing is to stay out of exchanges, let him throw the shot from long ranges, don't get hit. A rather pointed choice of entry music here as Lewis walks in to James Brown's The Big Payback. Well, Lennox Lewis has, at least in his public utterances, been in total denial of what happened in South Africa. He has a chance tonight to turn around that lazy, complacent, arrogant performance. Incidentally, Jim, the odds when this fight opened were somewhere between four and five to one in favor of Lewis. The latest report, it's down to two to one. So the betting public is giving Rockman a serious chance to repeat South Africa. Well, I don't think there's any question that observing the outward manifestations of the psychological interplay between the two fighters in these last few weeks leading up to the fight. The general perception is that Rachman is the one who's comfortable and likes his position. Lewis is on the defensive. Lennox says that's not the case. I'll reverse that as soon as I get into the ring tomorrow night. We shall see. Remember that his history is when he gets angry, or respectful or even fearful of an opponent, he tends to become more defensive, which is to his advantage as a fighter. That's his best style. His natural style. A cautious, stand your ground counterpuncher. Here comes the man who might be seen as the attacker. Certainly he was the attacker in South Africa. When he went to Johannesburg to fight Lennox Lewis, he was widely seen as an ordinary fighter. Larry, in recent weeks, he's been at great pains to portray himself as just an ordinary guy who happens to hold the heavyweight championship of the world. How much chance is there at, that at the end of this night, we'll look back and say, well, he was just ordinary after all? Well, he is just an ordinary guy in the sense, one of 12 children, brother who's a doctor, father who's a Muslim prison minister, an ordinary guy who sold drugs as a teenager, had five bullets removed from his stomach and 500 plus stitches put into his head after a fatal car accident. An ordinary guy who went from thug to pub, the heavyweight champion of the world. Just about as ordinary as you can be, Jim. Like so many American heavyweights of recent vintage, he came relatively late to the sport after having shown his athletic talent in other pursuits like football and swimming. His father wanted him to swim in a swim club as a teenager, and he did, but he's approached a steep learning curve in boxing pretty doggone well. Yes, he has. You know, we thought four or five years ago that he was a comer, that he had a chance, that he showed athletic ability, that he showed intelligence in the ring, but then he seemed to crest go into a valley when he was knocked out by Moschiev. But this is a sport where one punch can change your life, and it changed his and maybe ours. So, George, is it Hasim Rahman's job now 
to go into this first round and try to hit Lennox Lewis as soon as possible with another big right hand shot. Remember, the knockout that he got over Lewis kind of developed itself. He didn't go out there searching for it. He, the knockout came to him. You go out there searching for it and you find yourself in a fix that so many fighters have been in with Lennox Lewis, trying to reach that long left jab, trying to get too much distance, close that distance. Let it happen. It happened before, it can happen again. A sizable number of ringside experts making exactly that pick in the last few days, watching the two fighters leading up to the fight. Many of the writers and broadcasters now saying, Rock's going to do it again. Let's see if he does as we go up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the beautiful Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada, as it's time for the featured bout of the evening. And it's all brought to you by Don King Productions in association with Lion Promotions, main events, the Mandalay Bay and Budweiser, the undisputed king of beers. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the WBC, President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Mauricio Suleiman, the IBF, President Marion Mohammed, Supervisor Mahasan Scott, and the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Luther Mack, Commissioners Amy Ayub, Dr. Tony Alamo, Glenn Carano, and Dr. Flip Mansansky, with the executive director, Mark Ratner. Introducing to you our judges, scoring this bout from ringside, all from Las Vegas, Nevada, Patricia Jarman Manning, Dave Moretti, and Jerry Roth. And the third man to the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, he is working in this, his 145th world title bout, Joe Cortez. All right, and here we go, live from the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's time for the bout you've all been waiting for, the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing white trunks with red trim, hailing from London, England. He weighed in at a ready 246 and one half pounds. His record stands at 38 wins, two losses, one draw with 29 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 1988 Olympic gold medalist, the former two-time and undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Here is tonight's challenger, introducing Lennox Lewis. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the red corner, the defending world champion, bring the ring, wearing red, white, and blue trucks, fighting out of and representing his home of Baltimore, Maryland. He weighed in at 236 pounds with a record of 35 wins, two losses. He has 29 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he is making the first defense of his title. Please welcome the WBC, the IBF, and the IBO heavyweight champion of the world, introducing the hard-hitting Hasim, the Rock Rockman. Once again, a referee in charge. Now to give instructions, Joe Cortez. All right, pull up that T-shirt. Jack. All right, gentlemen, we want all the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight, but when good sportsmen like contact, guys, these trunks here, Lennox, are a little high. Punches here, above there, they're good. 
Same thing with you. Punch it here a little. Trunks a little high. high. Punch it here is good. Give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. God bless you. God bless America. Touch them up. There are two common sense outcomes, Pop, here. One, a repeat knockout by Rahman. The other, a defensive decision by Lewis. This being boxing, we often get uncommon sense, something we never foresee. Those are the two forms of conventional wisdom. There's no sweat on Rockman. Rockman is pretty dry. That is not good, is it, George? That's the way you want to be caught. Now, do you suppose Lennox Lewis is alert and aware enough to note that Rockman is dry? He should benefit himself just by him being in that position. When the guy's dry like that, don't let him get sweaty and loose. Rockman coming back with the jab. Trying to get that weapon started just as he did in round one in Johannesburg. Lennox has got to make certain that his back is always at least three feet away from those ropes. Give him time to be hit and move out of the way. Neither man has a good history with his back against the ropes. Rockman's two losses against Moscow Aventua both came when he got trapped against the ropes and hammered by power punches. Hard right hand by Lewis over the top lands on Rockman's chin. Let go. Let go. Let go, please. Let go. That may have been a more effective right hand than any of the right hands Lennox threw in South Africa. I see blood already on Rockman's face. Let's hope it's the red gloves and not blood. When Hennis throws that left jab, he has to constantly move. He can't stand there and see if the jab lands. He got to keep moving. Step and a half. Jab, step. Jab, step. Step. Halfway through the round, Rockman has yet to throw a right hand. So it appears that Rockman has come to box, not to punch at least for the moment. Lewis, his normal patient self, sticking the jab and allowing Rockman to come to him. In the first fight, Rockman jabbed to the chest. He didn't reach the Lennox head. He better go back to the basic. Keep your jabs headed to his chest. Everything good happens. If you're in Lennox Lewis's corner, you like what you've seen in these first couple of minutes. If you're in Hasim Rockman's corner, you may still be waiting for your man to get properly warmed up. Somebody is bleeding, and I think it is Rockman because there's blood on the left shoulder of Lewis. I think the right hand opened Rockman's left eye. And that left eye was bleeding in South Africa at the moment when Rockman knocked Lewis out. It created a sense of urgency for Rockman in South Africa, and he's bleeding above the left eye now. You don't want him to let Lennox Lewis get his rhythm with his jam. I'm told that the replay is going to show the right hand was on the chin. So maybe it's the jab that opened the left eye. It was a good right hand, that's for certain. But there's no question Rachman is bleeding from above the left eye. That is his lead eye. It's the eye that Lewis will be targeting with his jab. It's a disadvantage for Hasim Rachman from the get-go. Good round for Lewis. He drew blood. Keep pumping the jab, baby. Watch your right hand. And so I'm getting a little bit more of the hooks off from down here, but you're getting the hook off, okay? You're fighting a good fight. Good fight. Good fight. Good fight. Rockman's cut man is the excellent Miguel Diaz. It's nice and calm, baby. That jab is doing a toll. You don't hurt him already. Put the right hand behind him. Come behind with the left hook. Suck it in. Yeah. You're okay, baby. My girl got you. You're okay. Let's take a look at the replay, Larry. That could have been the jab. And from no, the reaction it was a right of, hand. It was a right hand a while before then that did all of that. Well, from Rockman's reaction, he knows he was bleeding. That was not the jab to have to do it. Punch to do it. Jabs in round one, Lewis threw 37 of them and landed 17. The statistical marker on Lewis, in those fights in which he throws more than 30 jabs per round, he's awfully hard to handle. 
Rachman threw 30 dabs in the first round and landed 16. So he's off to a good start as well. He's allowing Lewis to use the middle of the ring. It's what he shouldn't do. Lewis' back should always be two feet from the rope. Nevada State oh, Athletic no, Commission no, Executive no. Director Mark Ratner no, 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 assures no, no, no. us that the cut over Rachman's eye was caused by a punch, not by a butt. So it's a legal cut. I saw the right hand, that's for sure. I don't think Rockman saw it coming. Lennox Lewis threw 37 jabs in round one. If he throws 37 jabs around, Emmanuel Stewart, his trainer, is going to be very happy with the way Lewis is prosecuting the fight. There's a left hook that lands and a right to the body. Lewis oh, oh, only hurts oh, oh, himself when oh, oh, he gets into these oh, 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 close exchanges. Hey, if he can stay on the outside, let's go. close exchanges, he's going to hurt. There he jabs and steps back. That's part of the plan. Jab, step back, keep the distance between himself and Rachman. Now Lewis is getting closer to the ropes. This is what Rockman right, should want now. Bring up, bring up. Make him keep his back on those ropes. And that same right hand is always there for you. The exchange is still in the center of the ring for the moment. Lewis trying to keep his jab upstairs. Now he throws to the body, a tactic that worked so well for Rockman in South Africa. Let go, let go. Some of the jabs that Lewis is landing are the hardest I've ever seen him land. That's where it has to be. It's got to be hard. It's got to puff you up so that you can keep, been, make the man say his dish. Yeah, yes. there have been times when he's just been sort of painting his opponent and, and moving away at the same time, but he's throwing some hard left hands tonight. This is indeed a very aggressive jabbing performance by Lewis, and you saw him jab to the top of the head, then bring the right hand over the top, George. He loves to hide the right hand by jabbing you up on the head. Once again, Lewis's legs are a little too close to the ropes. That's where he's gonna find his troubles if he finds them at all. Back is getting even closer now. He's gotta stay in the middle of the ring. Rockman is starting to get him to go on the ropes now. How do you like the way Rockman's working his way back into it? He's got his body, got Lennox back on the ropes. Lennox is in an excellent position now. Stay in the middle of the ring. Lennox misses with a big left hook as round two comes to a close. You got to get him into your floor a little bit. You got to get him into your floor a little bit. You got to stay alert, man. He's going to get desperate now. He's getting desperate. Watch him right now. there and take that away from him. Even if you have to just sit right there and shield him. Whatever. Take that. Suck it in. How you feel, baby? Very good. Tip the lip. Once that jab starts landing, you know the right hand come behind it. Do it. Here's Lewis after throwing a series of jabs, lands a clean right, left hook. And here, some jabs. That is one stiff jab. And he's thrown 68 jabs in the first two rounds. He's never lost a fight in which he's averaged 30 jabs per round. <laughs> Through round two by CompuBox numbers of 72 total connected punches, 55 are jabs. So it has been a jabbing contest up to a point, but Lewis did land the one big right hand in round number one. And he drew blood, so perhaps Rockman got under Lewis's skin with the, with the taunting, but Lewis got under his skin with a punch. Lewis's corner told him, don't worry about the left hand, don't worry about the hook, just stay out of the right hand, that's your harm's way. And Lewis is doing a good job, but you gotta step back to your left every now and then, make him throw the hook, make Rockman throw his hook. Rockman doesn't seem to have any confidence in a good, strong left hook. So what do you want to do is make him throw him. Just make him do it. Rockman contends in sparring. His left hook is getting better. But he's been a one-two fighter through most of his career. Jab, right cross. As for that matter, has Lewis. There's a left hook by Lewis, and it, it lands. Hurt. It hurt. Not only did he land, it hurt Rockman. 
Now you don't want to get too overconfident with a guy who's knocked you out. Keep the herd on, keep the rounds coming. Rockman trying to pound to the body as he gets in close. Lewis lands another stiff jab and Rockman backs Rack out. That's the hook, make him throw those hooks. Lewis is doing a good job of that. He seems for the moment, George, ooh, to have nullified Rachman's right hand. How's he doing it? Boy, he's hurt him from long range, as we said earlier. Hits him with a good right hand and never tries to finish it. This is not a Lennox Lewis who is especially defensive. He's, he's boxing and punching. This is a Lennox Lewis who's commanding the space in the ring in exactly the same way he did not do it in South Africa. Rockman can still reel this fight in, but he's gonna have to get Lennox Lewis on those ropes and make him, now you go, make him, make, make him believe out of that left hook. Rockman finally lands a left hook. Lennox, these are trembling already because of a left hook. He's holding a little bit this time, Lennox Lewis. That left hook rung his bell. But the jab comes back. And when Lewis doubles up and triples up on the jab, he keeps the space between himself and Rachman. Rachman jabbing to the body again. Lewis' hands are down. He's close to the ropes. What more can you ask for if you're Rachman? Damn jazz. You saw the formula though when you started going to him. You can change up on this man now. You don't have to, you can start just saving yourself. Start going to him and playing. Hey, backing up. Throw the right kidney and stuff. And keep, every time he come at you, do like this. Put them hands up. That kills everything. Just keep doing that. You can't get over your arms. Every time you make any kind of retreat to you, I mean, run to you, put your hands up high. That stops everything. I move the bucket punch. Good, just relax yourself, champ. Put the leash in the part of the Put the leash. Lennox Lewis may have been outwitted by the verbally sharp champion. He is not being outhit by him. First three rounds have followed the Lewis plan, particularly in the sense that he's throwing the jab with great frequency, averaging 34 jabs per oh, round. Emmanuel, he down. landed 17 out of 34 down, jabs Emmanuel, in round down. three. That's a great statistical indicator for Lewis from CompuBox. Harold Letterman, how'd you score the first three rounds? Okay, Jim, three, oh, nothing, oh, 30 to 27, oh. Lennox Lewis. Jim, when a guy circles to his right like Lennox is doing, it's an unnatural move for right-hand fighter. He's doing it beautifully, so that rock can't hit him with that big right hand. Good ring general shot for Lennox Lewis. Another thing. In all the exchanges, Lennox will get off first. Keep Rockman off balance, so Rockman can't get set to punch. Watch this, Lennox is always going to land the first punch. And perhaps by way of trying to ask his fighter to be even more aggressive, Emmanuel Stewart between rounds said to Lennox Lewis, Lennox, this man can't counterpunch. Go get him. Yeah, but the one thing that lives in Lennox Lewis' head, that night in Africa. Yep. You can't take that away from him. You know, even his own corner said to him, uh, to Rockman, if he punches, just keep your hands high. They're telling him not to counter punch. Boom! Boom! Will Rockman get up, or half the table's oh. been turned? Oh. Is it Six, reversed? Seven, eight, nine. It's over. Lennox, Lennox Lewis, Lewis got revenge. Has captured his revenge. And now it's Rachman complaining in the corner that he didn't get the full count. Lennox Lewis fought a virtually perfect fight. Emmanuel Stewart asked him to attack. He did, and he got the result they were looking for. George, what did you think of the stoppage? You know what happened? Lennox Lewis let an ordinary fighter beat him in Africa. He came back and made the ordinary fighter look like an ordinary fighter. 
I think the stoppage was right on time. The guy got caught with a hard shot. Very few fellas can get up from him. He got up, went down. Cortez the best. In the trial in which Rockman was forced to take this rematch, Emmanuel Stewart testified that you have to make it immediate because our fighter Lennox Lewis is getting older. Lennox Lewis just made him a perjurer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Larry's talking about age in the opposite direction. He's been converted. <laughs> that may turn out to be Lennox Lewis's most respected performance ever in the ring. Isn't that something? Else? Beautiful stuff. This is what some of his supporters thought he could have done to Holyfield if he had decided to be more aggressive. Rachman totally out of position after the left, and the right hand was good night. He did it by long range. That's most importantly. He didn't try to close in. Everything was out in the opening. That's the way you want to fight a puncher. And he set it all up with the left hand by firing aggressively, keeping his left hand in Rachman's face, mixing in the left hook every once in a while with the jab. He changed it up here. Instead of jab and right hand, it was hook and right hand. And you know what? The old saying, never follow a punch you around. And Rockman did. Rockman made the fatal mistake. I'm going to follow you no matter what you jab me or what, I'm going to follow you. Well, Rockman has spent months saying he had no respect for Lennox Lewis. He went into the ring and showed he had no respect for Lennox Lewis. No respect for Rockman, and he tasted canvas. So now they're even. Fifth round knockout for Rockman in South Africa. Fourth round knockout for Lewis here. And Lennox regains what he surely believes is his right. The heavyweight championship of the Isn't world. Isn't that something? Cannot believe it. And this all happened because Rockman had no respect. He didn't repeat. Beaten in the chest, he just threw at the head and missed. And incidentally, to came into the ring, not fully warmed up, and he never really caught up to Lewis's Dry momentum. as a bone, and he, by the time the sweat was there, he's already caught on a, a bloody eye. Where's that about? I told you they were unknown. They were unknown. Where's that about? Look at chest. All three judges had scored the first three rounds all for Lewis, so he was well on his way to the decision victory that most of his supporters thought he'd get. Then he shortened it up. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one minute, 29 seconds in round number four. Our referee in charge, Joe Cortez, reaches the count of 10. The winner by way of knockout, he is now the three-time heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. Final CompuBox numbers will show you Lewis advantages in all categories. He landed 24 more punches. He threw 39 more punches. He was brilliantly accurate, connecting with half the punches that he threw. He painted Rachman with power punches, mostly set up by the jab. And in the end, he scored the huge combination, left hook, right cross, and knocked Rachman out. There you have it, total jabs. Lewis threw 111 jabs in just under four rounds, and that's the benchmark. When he throws 30, 30 jabs per round, you can't handle him. Rachman could not. Let's go to Larry Merchant with the heavyweight champ, Lennox Lewis. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Lennox. You came into the fight. Your opponent was bone dry. Did you notice anything right from the start? Well, I seen, I seen a little twinkle in his eye, you know? You know, plus I've been dreaming all week to change his name. Change his name from has, has been, the has been Rockman. His name has been Rockman now. No, 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 Rock. How did you turn your anger at him for all of the taunts he's been making at you into a positive? No, man, no. Into a positive for you? I didn't even hear the question. I'm sorry, Lennox. How did you turn? How, how did you turn all the anger that you had welling up in you because of the taunting, because of your own lackluster performance in Africa, into this positive? I, I just stayed focused. You know, when when we were in South Africa, yeah, uh, I said that the belts were on loan. 
So he's had his 15 minutes of glory. Now they come back home to me. Do you acknowledge now that you didn't give your absolute best effort? You didn't take him seriously in Africa? Well, you know what? I didn't take him serious enough. I was in good shape in Africa, but you know, one punch, he got through with one punch when it was, I was, I was a little not focused in that, that, uh, that, that fight. And he got through with a great punch. We're in, we're in the heavyweight business. You can end things in one punch. Why did you hide out in your dressing room tonight? You seemed like you were just what? In your own zone and you just were focused on what was going to happen? Yeah, I was very focused. I didn't want to get into the hoopla. I was just showing the world that I was focused. They couldn't see too much of me. Even Rotman wanted to come in and see what I was doing. He was nervous. So he was outside my dressing room. I was laughing. Madiba! Yeah, right. big up South Africa. The, fir the first few rounds, Winnie. you describe yes. what you were doing in the first few rounds. Your jab seemed more authoritative than we've ever seen it. You, you stayed away from his right hand. Was that the plan? Yeah, just to give him some movement. He couldn't take, he couldn't take the movement. And, you know, I, I just showed him a different style. I told you, I can switch any style I want to. And, and this time, I just showed him a different, different style of moving. All right, let's go now to the Jamea, fourth. Up. Let's go to the fourth round and take a look at the knockout. You tell us what you saw. Emmanuel told you in the corner you can be more aggressive. What did you see? Well, I notice every time I try and reach around him with a hook, he sticks his arms out. And more time, he's watching out for the straight right hand. So I kind of turned it around on him and threw a, a roundhouse right hand. Emmanuel Stewart also said to you, look, this man doesn't counterpunch. You can attack him. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, took, I took some of the pressure to him. You know, gave him a lot of things to think about. Kitchener Waterloo, big up. <laughs> what does that mean? Huh? What you I'm, I'm just picking him up, picking up all these places. Miami, big up. All right. It was, spec yes. it was speculated before this fight, and reasonably, that you had been knocked out by this man and that you would be conscious of that in this fight. How did you express that? Well, I definitely wasn't gun shy, you know, plus I wanted to knock him out in the, in the fourth round a little quicker than he knocked me out. So, you know, in a sense, I got my up on him. Do you feel that any of his pre-fight antics from the fight at the ESPN uh, uh, publicity tour to all of the stuff that was going on uh, helped you in any way? Yeah, it did. Those things really helped me. You know, I showed a lot of disrespect there, and I just, I just was uh, keeping all these things inside me. I said, okay, you're going to pay fight time. And, you know, this is where he paid for it. Thank you very much. But now, now talk to us about your future. There are a number of fighters out there who you could fight, whether it's a, a Tyson Bird, who is a, 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 a of a number one ranked fighter. It could be your countryman, Kirk Johnson. It could be Vladimir Klitschko. Where do you want to go? You know, I want Tyson. Definitely want Tyson, you know. Every, I've been waiting for him since after the Holyfield fight, but it doesn't really matter to me. I'll take whoever. You know, Ocean's Eleven is coming up, and uh, the, I was fighting a guy named Magnovich on, on, uh, on, t on screen, so that fight may come around. There's Bird out there. There's enough guys out there, but, you know, whoever, whoever. How satisfying is this fight for you compared to anything else that's happened in your career? It's very satisfying for me because, you know, a lot of people had me count out. They said I was too old. They said this may wreck my, uh, my future. Uh, you know, I'm really happy about it. You know, I, I knew what I wanted to do, what I was going to go out there and do, and I went out and did it. Thank you very much, Lennox. Congratulations well, again. Yeah. And now Larry Merchant will go across the ring and try to get a word with Asim Rahman, as we take an aerial look at the Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino, where in the event center, Lennox Lewis has regained his heavyweight crown. And now let's go to Larry Merchant with the now former heavyweight champ, Haseem Rahman. Thank you again, Jim. Haseem, you said that you thought he would try to fight you in some different way tonight. What was that way from your perspective? Well, I thought he was attacking more early than last time and uh, provided me plenty of opportunities to counter him with my own right hand. But I thought he kept his distance good today. But uh, basically, the whole situation is, it ain't no dominant champions out here today. Uh, Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson, Hassan Rock, Levander Holyfield, John Ruiz, any of us could get beaten on any given day. As we keep showing you, it's just a round robin, and it ain't no dominant champions out here. Uh, you know, I got to give him respect. He prepared well. Uh, he was in shape. He threw uh, a nice, hard right hand. I didn't even see the punch coming. Uh, he threw it off the hook, blinded me with the hook, and threw the right hand. 
It was a good punch. Uh, I give him enough credit. He got the title. He's the champ. But uh, ain't nobody got no long title reign who I see. Was, was his left jab more uh, important in this fight than it was before? Because he seemed to be landing it with more authority, and you weren't landing yours. Yeah, I think uh, it was not only his jab, but his distance. He, he, he did a good job with his footwork and his distance. Uh, he stopped me from landing my jab really, really well. Uh, he was a, a, a lot more cautious. And uh, he, fought, he fought a good fight. He fought a good fight. He must study the taste pretty good. And uh, you can't take nothing away from him. But as you know, uh, any of us get hit with a big right hand, it's a lot of punches at the top of this division. I just, it, just ain't, it ain't no heavyweight that's going to stand at the top like that right now. All right, let's take a look at what happened in the fourth round, Rock, and see how that ended uh, in the round before you finished him in South Africa. He led with the hook, you know, turned my head with the hook, blinded me with the hook, and threw the straight, perfect right hand. Uh, you know, with these big, strong guys, lifting an enormous amount of weight, look, at it, it was a good shot, you know, and uh, I wasn't able to recover. So, um, you know, that's what happens. Was that, did that bloody eye bother you at all? Oh, yeah, I mean, he cut my eye in the first round. It was dripping, but, you know, I had to go on. I didn't even really want to part at it because, you know, notions to come up that I want to quit or this, that, and other. But I ain't no quitter. I mean, Lennox Lewis been knocked out in the amateurs and the pros. You know, that's just something that happened in boxing. Uh, some of my fighters get knocked out is how they come back. You know, he came back, showed he a true champion. Now it was up to me to come back and see what I can do. Do you think that all the taunting that you did so successfully against him before the fight helped him at the end of the day? I don't know. I think it was his preparation. The taunting, I don't think, had anything to do either way. He prepared proper. Uh, he had a good game plan. He kept his, uh, he kept my jab away, and he kept his distance. I thought he fought a, a very smart, very intelligent fight. And uh, I was, you know, hoping that I could get him into the later rounds where he could slow down a little bit. But, uh, you know, it didn't happen, unfortunately. And I just got to go back to the drawing board. I take it from your comments that you're going to keep on keeping on and you want more big fights as a heavyweight. Oh, definitely. I want to fight somebody, you know, who, who can fight, who, who I'm not supposed to be able to beat, as always. And uh, I think I got a few more surprises in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Just court. one thing, of all the gamblers in this town on this night, you took the biggest gamble of all by taking less money and, this, and taking your chance that the future would take care of itself. Do you regret that? Oh, not at all. Uh, who says I took less money? You know, my purse ain't, ain't, ain't tallied up yet. My purse is generated on pay-per-view buy, the crowd sale, you know what I'm saying? Uh, nobody, you can't tell me what, what I made. Can you tell me what I made? No, I'm not a, a, a good accountant. Make, I might make five, six million dollars more than him. Thank you very much, Rock. We'll see you again.